ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus. You are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and a very special guest. This guy I used to admire from afar. Then I reached out to him, befriended him. I look up to him. He is a real estate professional. He is one of the best marketeers in the industry. He is a full-time real estate investor who owns and runs Reliant Home Offer out of Orlando, Florida. He is the one, the only David Buckles. David, Thank welcome you. to the Loan Officer Podcast. One hell of an introduction, man. Yes. And let's be clear. I look up to you. I stand about 5'10". I think you stand about 6'4". <laughs> I'm not quite 6'4". My son is 6'4". I'm only 6'2". So yes, physically you have to look, look up to me. But from a career standpoint, like respect. Mm-hmm loves respect right 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 what what's that adage like um top producers are drawn to other top producers or top Correct. performers and you know knowing you for the past decade because we're both in the central florida market mm -hmm. and your role for many years was that of a real estate agent my clients for many years were real estate uh, agents mm -hmm. and then you started a marketing company at which point your clients were real estate agents and loan officers and then you got into real estate investing and then I got into real estate investing. And it's like, holy cow, like this guy who's crushing it in so many different worlds that I have looked up to is now intersecting my world. Mm -hmm. Let me get to know him. Right. And we got to know each other. And I'm like, oh my God, you have to come on the podcast because I want to do an episode literally titled how to become a real estate investor. That's great. I could attempt to teach it, but I think you could teach it better. So what I would like to do for the audience who is tuning in is I'm gonna interview you today with the whole idea that we are leaning hard into helping someone who is currently considering either career change, okay. they're graduating college and this is what they're gonna want their first career to be, or they may have a career that they absolutely love, but they're looking to diversify. They're looking to maybe take some of the money that they're earning elsewhere and place it into a passive income revenue stream, at which point real estate investing is very intriguing to them. Right, okay. And I'm hoping you'll share some do's and some don'ts, some best practices, as well as your story. And I'm sure like many successful entrepreneurs, you've had your bumps and your bruises. You've taken big risk. Some of those risks have paid off. Some of the risks were big swings and misses. And hopefully you'll open up and share that with our audience as well. Absolutely, open book, man. Beautiful. Open so, book. so we're going to just go ahead and jump right in. Okay. But first and foremost, you're David Buckles, born and raised in Orlando, Florida? Born and raised. Born and raised. And you became a licensed real estate agent in what year? 2008. 2008. Some say the best year, best year to do it. Some say the worst year to do it. Yeah, well, 2008, for those that keep track at home, was one of the worst economic times our country has ever seen. It's known right. as the Great Recession. And you became a realtor for what reason out of curiosity? So I originally got licensed because my friend's dad was the sales manager, the VP of Orange Lake Resorts for Timeshare. Okay. So I originally got licensed to go sell Timeshare. The Great Recession is happening. I'm getting licensed. It's So my birthday's in May, end of May. So here I am, 18. I'm finally able to take the test. I graduate high school. I'm able to take the test. So I go, I take the test. Probably the next month, I'm, you know, I'm getting licensed. I'm doing the BBPR thing. He calls me and says, hey, listen, um, we're restructuring the frontline sales team and, and there's no space for you here. So Ooh, wah, wah, wah. exactly right. So I said, OK, well, what do I do? My dad happened to know his business partner at the time was a broker. So he, he knew a couple of people introduced me and I actually went to work for Lisa Reed. Um, do you know Reed Nissan? Yes. Locally? Yes. So her husband is, Re is Raymond Reed of Reed Nissan, and she had a brokerage out in Claremont. So I went and got my license and hung it there with Lisa, and, and that's where I got started, was working for her. So you're 18 years old. 18 years Were old. Were you even shaving? Like, you have a nice beard Dude, I had now. this beard since I was probably 16, 17 years old. Oh, you're one of those guys. I was. Yeah, you're that guy my son would call a puberty monster. I was. Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. Okay, very yep. cool. So you at least were 18, but maybe you looked like you were 24. Correct. I had a couple extra years to give me that, hey, who is this kid and why is he so young in real estate? Yeah, but you are new to the world. You are just a baby, newly licensed, working for a, a, a broker in a city outside of the greater Orlando area for those that are tuning in uh, throughout the country. And you had to figure out how to become successful, mm -hmm. which means you had to figure out how to lead generate. 
And you were sharing with me that the first people that you found that were buying homes in 2008, which by the way, was a pretty depressed market, Mm -hmm. were real estate investors. Real estate investors. When I got licensed, I said, okay, what the heck is going on here? There's two people buying houses right now, investors and first time home buyers. First time home buyers didn't have any money. They needed every everything that they could scrape from the seller to contribute to a closing. So I said, this is too much. What's the easier route? And not easier per se, but what's the more... Consistent, uh, reliable. Correct, reliable is the word yeah. I, would, I would use. And I found investors to be that. And so I started working with investors, found one guy. And the beautiful thing about investors is they know other investors. Okay. So when I said, hey, man, like this is what I'm doing. I can help you find these houses. So I was basically bird dogging for a couple investors. And I had a, I had a back then before DocuSign. But remember when we used to have to fax offers and stuff, yes. like get that stuff? I had a signature page and a copy of the, the escrow check. So when I had these investors buy boxes, I would, go, I would comb the MLS hours and hours and hours every day. And I would shoot out offers all day long with the signed uh, back contract page and the escrow deposit. And I would send those via e-fax. We would scan it into the email and it would send it for the fax. We were buying REOs, we were dealing with other, uh, other agents, but investors were uh, the one that opened my door to the real estate game. So for the realtors tuning in, if you wanna work with real estate investors, people like David, mm-hmm. then find one and know that birds of a feather flock together. Correct. Maybe that one would be willing to introduce you to two or three others, at which point now you have to put in the work. Now I'm gonna jump ahead by a minute or two. Okay. Because you just said something, because today's episode is more for real estate investors, people Mm -hmm. who want to make this their career, or this a part of their revenue stream in terms of personal income. And you just said that you are a realtor, bird dogging, which bird dog is a terminology that we use as real estate investors. The people who go out and find the properties are the bird dogs. Right. Which by the way, that's the hardest part. The hardest part is finding the property. Everything else is easy or easier, but you have to first find the deal. Right. Then you have to lock the deal up. Then you have to figure out how to finance the deal. Then you start doing all the stuff they show you on TLC, the actual beautification and right. fixing exactly. and getting it listed and sold and making all of this money. Well, until you don't. Um, but, but the one thing that you said that I loved is that as a real estate investor, somebody found a young, hungry professional who is willing to get after it. And if you got after it and you found him or her a couple homes, they won because they got to purchase homes at a discount. You won because you earned a commission. So if you're taking notes at home, want to be real estate investors, sounds like David's telling you, you need to go out and find some real estate agents that will bird dog on your behalf Mm -hmm. because you need help generating the necessary leads so you can make your offers to get some accepted. All right, cool. So got your real estate license 2008. You started working with real estate investors. Mm-hmm. In order to make sure that we don't spend like Joe Rogan time on today's episode, which I would love to do with you, David, but I know you have to get to go see a couple homes today. And I know that I have a pretty important lunch appointment and we, we want to be cognizant of our audience. We're going to try to keep today's episode somewhere under 45 minutes. Okay. So you sold real estate. At one point you got, out, you got out of real estate. You're like, you know what? I'm getting married. The investors aren't buying at the same time pace they were because now let's fast forward to like 2014 maybe Mm -hmm. you moved out of florida you moved to new jersey got one of those corporate jobs with the company car and the benefits and obtained some really amazing sales experience right you were telling Mm -hmm. me off camera where not only did you work for a fortune 500 company like pepsi cola Mm -hmm. working in sales that you then parlay that into another opportunity where you received, and I talk about this on many episodes, Sandler sales training, right? where your sales cycle was, what were you selling in New Jersey? Just real quick for the windows audience roofing. to understand. Yeah, windows, roofing, and siding. So we were selling exterior home remodeling projects. So not just products, projects. So I was a salesperson for window jobs, roof jobs, siding, front door, shutters, you name it, exterior of the house, we sold it. So someone through a call center would schedule an appointment, Correct. and then you would show up, sit down with that homeowner Mm -hmm. and you would spend how much time with the homeowner on average our pitch was two to four hours depending on the product and your goal was to get them to sign on the dotted line one call closers wow and how long did you work that particular career for i did that for about 15 months okay and i wanted to share that with you because we're going to tie this down Mm -hmm. okay we're going to tie this down when you explained it to me here's what i heard wow david has received some of the best sales training you can receive and he has over a year of experience 
of getting belly to belly, face to face, eyeball to eyeball, skin to skin Mm -hmm. with the decision maker and having conversations, talking about value added propositions, using sales techniques in order to get that person to want to conduct business with you. And that's going to be important when David starts explaining the do's and don'ts of getting into real estate investing. It's good to know where he came from, right? He had experience working with real estate investors as a young, Mm -hmm. right out of high school, real estate agent. He then had experience outside of real estate, but selling housing goods, if you want to call it that, DIY type home remodel repair goods to the consumer Mm -hmm. before you move back to Florida at which point you became a licensed realtor again. Or you probably already, you, did you always keep your license? Always kept it. You always kept your license. It's one of those things you work hard for and you don't let go, even okay. if you're never going to use it. And for, I, I know so many people with a real estate license that have had it for 25 years and maybe used it once or twice. They got it for various reasons. And a lot of real estate investors think that they, I'm going to go get my real estate license so I can save on commissions. Well, that's the biggest, I would say, hunk of baloney, if you will, because at the end of the day, I could hire or or I could do it myself, hire an assistant, what have you. But the truth is, is I'm so busy doing other things that like it pays to have a realtor running your real estate transactions or someone specific. So like I don't even use my license the way most people would use it. But we have a team in house that lets us use the real estate license for like listings and referral fees and things of that nature. Okay, I love it. So you're chopping at the bit to get after it. I'm like Mm -hmm. stuck in the intro, right? Like this is a book of like four or five chapters. You know, every book has the intro. Mm -hmm. And then they have the chapters, which, by the way, as a reader, I always get annoyed because I first thing I do when I pick up a book is I look at how many pages it is. So I'm like, oh, great. It's only 230 pages. But then there's all the Roman numerals in the beginning, which has the intro. I'm like, oh, you lied to me. You're actually 240 pages right. because I have 20 pages of intro to get through. Well, today's episode, I'm trying to intro you because I think it's important for everyone to know where other people came from. What's their pedigree? That. What's their background? More importantly... Why did D.O. with TLOP think that David was the right person to come on the show, right? Because I will tell you this if you don't know me, because maybe you're only tuning in because you saw a good-looking David. You're like, oh, I want to hear what this guy has to say. Or maybe you're just a friend of David. You're like, oh, that's my buddy. Let me hear him talk. And this guy, Dustin, won't let him talk because he keeps on talking. But what what I want to make sure is they know that you're a person of relevance. You're a person of substance. You're a person of experience. Because the last thing you ever want to do is take advice from someone who has never achieved what it is that you're trying to achieve. So yeah, I'm still stuck in the intro phase. We're going to fast forward a little bit, but I wanted to point two things out to the audience. And then we're going to get into these awesome tips and tricks that you're already sharing is your backstory is you got back into real estate. Mm -hmm. You started selling for yourself. You started marketing for yourself. Mm -hmm. You actually took a back seat to selling real estate because you got so good at marketing and lead generating that you did that full-time for other mortgage loan originators and other realtors. And then you started doing it for real estate investors, at which point you're like, wait a minute, my career's come full circle. I started as a realtor who's specialized in helping real estate investors find property. I sold real estate myself, off and on, full-time, sometimes, part-time, other times. I'm back to selling real estate full-time. I'm back to living in Orlando, Florida. I'm now lead generating for home buyers, home sellers, and real estate investors. But then you started seeing that you had a knack for the investor side of things. Then you started seeing that you had a passion for the real estate, for the investor side of things. Then you started thinking, why in the hell am I making $5,000 a month selling leads to real estate investors right. when I could potentially make $50,000 a month generating leads for myself and becoming that real estate investor. Absolutely right. I was on the wrong side of that equation. Yes. Like many people who are in internet marketing and lead generating will will quickly find out. Mm-hmm. My buddy Dennis, who's been on the show, who actually built our website, which is theloanofficerpodcast.com. And Dennis quit building websites because he ended up buying businesses of the companies he was building websites on because he's like, I can run the business and that business has way more ROI than what I can generate building websites, right? You did the same thing with real estate investors, but what's really cool about your story, which we need to come back and do like a second episode where we talk about all of the things that have gone wrong in your career and how they made you better because Facebook, which Mm -hmm. was your number one Avenue for lead generating changed their algorithm on you, Yep. which then forced you to pivot. So 
I share that. That's a teaser for a future episode, but it's to let people know that David's getting ready to start talking about all of his, his successes and how you too can be successful like him mm-hmm. following his career trajectory, his career path and learning from his successes and his mistakes. But you have to understand that it's not always rosy. It's not always like everything's going my way. There are swings and misses. Your number one lead source evaporates on you due to a regulatory change. You now have to pivot. Right. These are all things that David has had to experience that we probably won't have time to get into. But it was 2019 that you made the conscious decision. You're going to go full time into real estate investing. That's so it. you have been doing real estate investing full time for the past four years. That's it. Cool. Correct. And last year, how many properties did you and your team purchase? Oh, man. I want to say the total was somewhere in the, it was like 23 or 24. And the reason I'm, you know, I don't know the exact number. We did a lot of lots. We sold a lot of dirt. We flipped some lots in the beginning of last year to a lot of the builders. We did about 12 fix and flips, a couple wholesale deals, but it was in the 20s. Okay. What are you on pace to do this year? Here we are. We're all the way through first quarter, Mm -hmm. um, beginning of April, mid-April by the time this episode actually gets released based on your current leads, what's in the mm-hmm. hopper, your closing percentages, all of that, what are you thinking that you're going to end up acquiring or taking down this year? We'll do 60 plus. 60 plus transactions. We'll do 60 plus. We're yep. already at, we've got six or eight on the year closed and another 15 in the pipeline projected to close in the next 60 to maybe 90 days if everything, you know, you know how this real estate game can be. But yeah, in the next 60, 90 days, we have another 15 deals that are projected to close. What was it like in, uh, if you can remember, I'm just curious, trying to build the story arc here. What was it like in 2021? Do you recall how many properties you actually put under contract and sold in 2021? 2021 was another dirt year. I sold a lot of, Okay. there was, there was a, 2020 was the real hard year because prices started going up. They didn't want, they didn't need to sell at a discount. You could sell for whatever price you wanted in 2020. Yes. 2021 was almost just as hard. So I pivoted big time. And it was like, okay, builders are building. I must have did 20-something lots in 2021. So that's where you were using your marketing strategy, at which at mm-hmm. point was no longer Facebook. You are using mailers. Direct mail. I was sending mail to people who owned little quarter-acre lots in pre-developed parts of like Melbourne, um, which is over by the coast, East Coast, Palm Bay, as well as Point Siena. Okay. There were infill lots that were developed back in the 70s and 80s that they, the salespeople would go over to military bases, whether it was in the United States or overseas, and they, would, they were trying to raise money, so they would sell lots to these Army people, to no people way. in the service. Yeah. So I'm sending mail to people who have owned these things for 30-plus years that pay taxes every single year and only paid five or six grand per lot. I'm calling them and offering them 15 grand for their for their lot. They're ecstatic. I pay cash for it. We turn around and put it on the market for 25, 30,000. Okay. So I love everyone's where did you get started story mm-hmm. because the last thing I want you to do is come on today and be like we're going to do 60 transactions with an with a average of $30,000 in net profit for right. $1.8 million and people be like, "Oh my god, it just came so easy." And it's like, "No." No, this dude launched full time in 2019. He struggled through 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. When he was struggling, he didn't back down. No, he doubled down and said, well, where can I pivot? He pivoted into residential lots, dirt. Dirt. And you weren't making 30 or $40,000 a pop. You're making eight to 12 grand per pop, but you could do many of them. Correct. You could keep the machine moving forward while you worked on your systems, your processes, probably getting some coaching, probably getting better at your at your approach and allowing the market to come back to you so that you could do 23 transactions in 2022 and you're on pace to do 60 this year. Right. Of the 60 this year, how many will you actually fix and flip? How many do you think you will actually fix and hold for a rental? And how many will you have a different exit strategy where maybe you assign it to another investor mm-hmm. or maybe you... Um, have a, a different exit strategy, whether it's Novation or whether it's MLS strategy, mm-hmm. just just to give a, a broad perspective to the audience. Yeah, so again, there's so many different exit strategies for these deals, and we use many. We have creative financing, the Novations that you mentioned. 
Um, so our current goals are projected that we're going to do two to three flips per month. Okay. Two to two to three new so, flips. So a flip for people tuning in that are like, hey, Dustin, you told me this was a how-to. You haven't gotten to the how-to yet. Yeah. We're getting there. But a flip means you're actually buying the property gonna and you're going to resell up. it for a profit. Usually you fix it up too. Correct. And fix it up is broad. Correct. Because it could be new paint and new floors. Or it could be the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. Right. Yep. Anywhere from lipstick to a complete gut re remodel job. Exactly right. Okay. So you want to do two or three. Two so to that's three roughly twenty four to thirty six of your sixty. Okay. We'll do the same volume of keeping properties. So okay. we're going to keep two to three a month as well. And then as far as you know, maybe a different strategy like wholesaling to other investors, three to four a month. Okay. So right now we're averaging six or eight contracts a month. We pushed it in Q2 to 7 to 10 is where we kind of want our deal flow to be per month. And then that doesn't even include listings because we have a lot of listing opportunity that we left on the table. And then just by implementing it last week, we signed a listing. We have two more listing appointments. So I think we're going to get three new listings here by either this week or next week, all from a simple script change. And so now, which leads me kind of back to a point that I wanted to say, like, Sure, you can wholesale, you can fix and flip, you can buy and hold, you can do all these things. And I think it's important to note that you can be a real estate investor, which you can wear all of these hats, or you can be a fix and flipper. A fix and flipper is not necessarily a real estate investor. They sure they invest in properties because you're putting money there, but a true investor is someone who buys something, holds it, appreciates it. Real estate investors are the ones in my mind that are owning properties that are developing, you know, whether it's residential communities, commercial properties, those are the true investors. They invest in the community, right? They invest in their net worth. They invest in their future families. And so that's why I think too, a lot of people have this idea of what a real estate investor is because the internet sensationalized it. You can't be a wholesaler and be a real estate investor because you're literally pushing product, right? You're just a glorified salesperson. Made sales and marketing and the product happens to be real estate. Okay. And, and this is my opinion. And this is what I had to work through to figure out what was my identity with who did I want to be in this real estate game, right? And so I wanted to be David, the real estate guy, David, the real estate investor. I do real estate. I don't just fix and flip. I don't just put a house on the MLS as a realtor and hope somebody buys it. We have probably six or eight different exit strategies that we use. And so now I tell everyone, hey, we're a full service real estate company. We're a buy first list last company. If I can't help you, you're a seller. You want to sell your home. You're not a lister. You didn't call me to list your house. You called me to sell it. And so when I talk to sellers, that's how I that's how I approach it. I get really direct with them. You're calling to sell your house, right? Yeah, okay. Well, listen, if you want to list your house, I'm not the guy. I can, but that's not why we're here. And there's just this level of transparency that I feel like we're we're building in the industry because I'm I'm David the real estate guy. I'm David the real estate investor not just the fix and flipper or the wholesaler. So to come all the way back and answer the question too, uh, seven and 10 deals a month, and we're utilizing all of the exit strategies we can because we're in the people business. Yes. We're in the people business. We help people get out of their situations and into better ones. Sometimes they're really ugly shit. Uh, yep. You said we can say shit. Sometimes yes. they're really shitty situations. Yes. And we're in the middle of a couple of them. Yep. And deals change, like deals change fast. And to, to go on that, we had a $35,000 a deal that we were working. We got the contract by $35,000. That's your projected net profit. Correct. When, when this deal is purchased and resold and all the stars align. Yes. You know, the spread isn't always the spread until it closes. Right? So this one was $35,000. We're hooting and hollering, slapping fives in the office. Long story short, we get to the closing table and we, we had to put out fires, jump through hoops. And at the end of the day, we netted 8,800 bucks. But, you solved a problem, but you gave back to the community, but you made some money. We yeah. didn't go broke. We didn't hit a home run, but this little old lady that we bought the house from, she had no mortgage. She got $350,000 net in her pocket. And now she's living in a, in a senior assisted living community. And she, she can live the rest of her days there because she has the adequate amount of money that she needs to do that. And we did that. We made that happen. Yeah. These are great stories, right? These are the stories that people need to hear mm -hmm. what you're getting yourself into. What I'm also hearing is that five years experience, look at what you can have. Right. Right. You can be a real estate. What did you call yourself? Like you do, you do real estate. I do real now, estate. I do real estate. Getting started, you might not be able to say, I do real estate. Getting started, you may say, I'm a wholesaler. And that's the say, deal finder that you said. It's important to find deals. That's where you start. 
you wholesale and then you stack your money and you're like, wait a second, I made all this money selling deals to other investors who are going to flip it and make double or triple. Well, you save your money and then you go become the flipper. Yes. So now you're a fix and flipper. Right. And then you may say, well, making money on fix and flipping, let me be the actual investor who's going to buy it and hold it. Let me not give myself a job because fixing and flipping is a full-time job. And for anyone who tells you it's not, they're lying to you. You can you can uh, attest to that. Yes. Even when you have a general contractor running the project, like you still have to manage the project and the general or the general contractor. There's no days off when it comes to to project management and flipping. The only thing more unpredictable than trying to coordinate tradesmen and contractors and manage a project is probably also trying to fly Spirit Airlines. <laughs> like like both of those things. Like the only thing predictable is the un unpredictable. Yeah. Like just you just know it's going to be a shit show. Correct. Right. One thousand percent. It's always going to cost more than you thought it would. Take longer. It's going to take longer. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're going to go a different direction than than what was originally promised. But at the end of the day, you'll get there. Right. And you will be safe and you will be sound. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time. Um, but no, I, the point I was hoping people are picking up is like, hey, you're listening to David talk, and I wanted you to talk about your experience. I think that mm -hmm. that validates why you're here and why people should listen to you, right? Your successes that you're experiencing, but it didn't happen overnight. No, this is a, this is a complete evolution. And I would even say that you have to have had your real estate license for the past, if I can do my math right, 15 years. And you don't necessarily need to have some of the best sales training in the world, but correct me if I'm wrong, you need to have a sales background. You need to have a marketing background. You need to be entrepreneurial. Like if you're thinking about a career in real estate, specifically, whether it's a fix and flipper, whether it's a wholesaler, or whether it's a David Buckles, I do all, all things real estate, you also need to be a marketeer, a salesperson. You have to have the ability to sit in front of that end user, which the end user for you guys is a seller, right? Mm -hmm. That's your client is the person selling the home right? and spend hours building rapport, building trust, offering solutions to their pain or solutions to their problems. I was once taught by my business partner, Brooke Buley. He's like, Dio, you make money in real estate when you buy the home. Right. That's when you make money. You don't make money when you sell it. Exactly right. right. You selling it is just proving your concept. You made your money when you bought it because you bought it at the right price with the right estimations in terms of like, how much money do I need in order to fix it up? Yeah. How much time am I going to be able to... Uh, is it going to take before I can sell it? And when I do sell it, how much money can I sell it for? Right at the purchase is when you made your money. When when you sell it, that's kind of like the uh, the graduation party, so to speak. Yep. Yeah. Um, for sure. Okay, so let's do this. Someone's listening in. They're like, all right, cool. Yeah, I kind of like this guy. I like what he's talking about. I would love to do something similar to what he does. And I'm on board. Understanding it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take hard work, long hours, constant learning. Mm -hmm many pivots, but when someone's getting started, what's the one thing that you would tell if someone called you and said, David, I want to pay you to teach me how to do what you have done. Where do I start? How would you answer that question? It's a great question. Um, to go back to it before I fully answer this, I think you don't necessarily have to be a salesperson. You'd have to be more, uh, like you said, entrepreneurial or business, because if you don't treat this like a business and you treat it like a hobby, then it'll be a hobby. You'll get paid like a hobby. If you treat it like a business, you'll, you'll get paid like a business. And so to answer your question, I think that's how I want to answer the question. Okay. Treat it like a business. If you're going to get started, go in knowing that like I'm starting a business. Now you may be only able to put part-time hours towards your business, but that's okay. It's a business. Your P and L's are tight. Your expenses are tight. Like if you're getting started in this journey, like treat it like a business and it'll pay you like a business. So let me add this for someone who owns multiple businesses. If you've never owned a business before, you need a business plan. Correct. You need a budget. You need to solve for how am I going to generate the leads? Right. And what is that going to cost me, whether in time right. or whether in, in true marketing dollars, mm -hmm. right? Those are things that you have to be able to solve for. Right. And then it's like, who am I? Am I the wholesaler? Am I the fix and flipper? Mm -hmm. Right. What type of marketing is out there? Let me ask you that. Right. What are some ways that someone who is approaching this like a business 
can generate leads. How do they find the homes? That's the hardest part. Hardest part. Yep. How do you find the homes? Couple ways. Okay. I built my business though on the backs of real estate agents. So my first word of advice to anyone who wants to become a real estate investor is go to where the people go first. Go, who do they trust first, an investor or a real estate agent? Real estate agent. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go find that person with the ugly house that they know it's ugly, they know it needs to be fixed up, they know they're not going to get market value, but they know they need to work with someone who's not going to pull the wool over their eyes, that's not going to lowball them to high hell and get away with it. So they put a real estate agent in the middle of you guys and the agent says, okay, you should probably work with an investor because. Mm -hmm. So now the, now the agent is vouching for you and on your behalf. I would say partner and, and make as many friends as you can with real estate agents. Tell them that you're the investor, you're the guy or gal. And if you're not, you work with the guy or the gal because you don't need the money, you need the deal. When the deal's there, the money shows up. So whether that means you're gonna find a partner or you're gonna sell it to, you're gonna assign it to another investor, what have you, the real estate agents, I think, are the first place that I would go if I was starting all over again. Yeah, because he or she that has the lead controls the purse strings, right? Correct. If you can get the lead, even if you don't have cash to buy the house, if you don't have the means to use hard money or private money to mm -hmm. finance the home, you could connect with other real estate investors in your market. And literally, this is, this is a tactic and a strategy because we're teaching how to, you could assign that, right? David could go find a property that he's buying for 60 cents on the dollar because it's ugly and needs repairs, but David doesn't have 160 grand to buy this $300,000 house. Mm -hmm. So maybe David comes to me and says, hey, Dustin, I have this home under contract for 160. I'll assign it to you for $20,000. So you're now buying it for 180, but hey, look, it's worth 300 once you get it fixed up. I can value that as another real estate investor say, David, that's a hell of a bird dog. High five. I'll gladly pay you a $20,000 wholesale fee or assignment fee. Mm -hmm. Bingo, bongo, bango. I just made 20 grand and I didn't have cash. I didn't have a bank willing to loan me money. I didn't have private funds. And you didn't need any of it. And I didn't need it. And I was able to lead generate for free. John Coleman, who usually sits in your seat, David, mm -hmm. he has a saying, if it's free, then it's for me. That's it. And you love realtors as lead sources because their leads come to you for free. Zero dollar marketing expense. Yes. It's, because it's the best one. what are the other ways? Like, like what, what are ways that you have had success generating leads? All of them. All of them. All of them. We've done PPC. Well, what, what does PPC stand so, for? So pay per click, which is like Google ads. Okay. But I have, so, to, I have to have a website to do that. Correct. And websites cost money to build. Or a landing page. Okay. You can use a simple landing page. Uh, like ClickFunnels. I used ClickFunnels for a long time. Or I'm not getting paid for this, but Carrot on yes. Carrot.com. Like we used their website. We still have one of their websites. We have their website and then a personal website, but it just captures two different types of people. Um, so we've done Facebook ads. We've done Google ads. We've done cold callers. We've hired call centers um, for calling and for texting. We've done... If you are going to use a caller or a texter, mm -hmm. where do you find the data though? You have to right? Because... Who are they going to call? Who are they going to call? Who are they going to text? Yeah, so you have to then purchase data. Which and we don't, have to, we don't have to give away the farm, mm -hmm. which isn't, yep. I will tell you, my company was spending $5,500 a month for data. It was a $30,000 contract over six months for data. This is specific data that meets certain criteria. Mm -hmm. And here, I'll give you a little bit of the farm. I won't tell you where we bought it from, right. but I'll tell you that it's out there. Many companies will say this data, but we asked for... We want people whose homes are built between 1986 and 1996. And right. we want it to be in these 10 zip codes. And we want it to make sure that the people owe no more than 70% of what their home is worth. Right? Like we gave it all of that data. Then the company provided it to us. Yep. But that costs money. Mm -hmm. And then you have to then give that data either to yourself, which by the way, are you going to sit there and text thousands of people a day and cold call thousands of people a day? No some form of a call center, whether it's it's internal, meaning right. someone that works for you, external, or even offshore Philippines or another country like we've that. We've had Egypt, we've had the Philippines, we've had India, like we've had so many virtual assistants in that. But, and to your point, like cold callers and texters, not only do you have to hire them, then you have to buy the data, then you have to, to buy the platform that they're gonna use to make the calls. Because these call centers, they don't typically offer the platform, they offer the service. 
So you plug in these people to whatever platform, they become yours. So but you're on. saying you need some kind of a lead management system, CRM. All of that. Yes. On top of it. Yeah. And so someone has to train. Those people. What to say, why to say it, how to say it. I mean, just like any other uh, employee has a manager typically to report to, it's no different when you go hire, again, like general contractors. Just because you hired a general contractor on your fix and flip doesn't mean that you don't have to manage the project or the contractor. It's the same thing when you hire these other services for calls and protects. Even when you hire people for pay-per-click management, it's like, what are my numbers? What were your expectations versus reality? Right? Like, like there's all those different things. So we've done that. We've done mailers. Mail. We've sent mail. Um, mail. How, how do you like mail? What, what are your thoughts on mailers? I'm a, I'm a huge believer in – my favorite saying is this. I want to do business with people who want to do business with me. Okay. So I'm a huge That's fan. That's a Zig Ziglar saying, I think. Yes. I'm a huge fan of people coming to me as opposed for me like doing outbound cold outreach. Mm -hmm. So I prefer the Facebook ads that bring the leads to me. They already know they're asking for a cash offer. Like they know what they're asking for. Now, I know because we're friends mm -hmm. that that was your number one lead source back in 2019 mm -hmm. and even into 2020. Right. Do you still use it today in 2023? I do not. Yeah, I because of the Facebook algorithm change, right? Yeah, because the real estate uh, it's all ba based in the real estate industry, mortgage industry. They've yeah. got so many different red flags and hoops that you got to jump through now. Yeah, that's such an awesome story that we don't have time to tell. But I just want people to know this when you're learning about David Buckles and his story. Mm -hmm. Like this guy had an amazing, amazing book of business where the, the leads were being generated by Facebook. Mm -hmm. It was so amazing. I tried to rip it off, David. <laughs> Did right? You? Literally, yes. Let, tried to rip it off. Hired these two college kids. Um, had them start a separate LLC that they were going to generate leads and sell the leads to my company. And it was going to be amazing. At the same time that was happening, Facebook changed the way that they do business, their various regulatory aspects. Mm -hmm. And long story short, that quit working. So imagine you're David Buckles and you go all in on real estate investing and you have this amazing marketing platform. And then like literally the rug is pulled from beneath your feet. That happened, yet you're still here today talking about acquiring five to six, eight to 10 homes per month. So high five and kudos. I think it's an awesome story to go retell later down the road. But I, yeah. I wanted to mention today because I want the audience to know that because you should plan for those type of events to happen that you can't prepare for. Totally. Right? Like I guess prepare for it, you can't plan for it. You can prepare mentally. Hey, I'm going to have roadblocks. I'm going to have pitfalls. I'm going to have hurdles to overcome. I don't know what they are. I just need to be aware of them and then trust that with a little bit of hard work, I'll get through it. Because you never know what those obstacles are. Like you don't necessarily know that, oh, this is a hardship. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? So like you'll be going through your, whatever you're going through and you'll look back and you're like, oh wow, that shaped me because of X, Y, and Z. There's no, there's no losing, right? There's only learning. And that's also been helpful because there's so many times I've been frustrated at, oh, cool, I dump all my money here. It's going good for four months. And I'm like, I can start to scale double down. And it's, then the numbers change and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go again. But it's the constant, like, again, it doesn't change. And so if you're not a fan of problem solving, probably not a good idea. If like you're not okay with getting kicked in the teeth every now and then, probably not a good business to get in. No, and really any business, right? right. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, you started with that. Mm -hmm. You're a business owner first. Right. Business owners are problem solvers. Business owners are the most resourceful person in the room. Business you, you owners typically have the mentality of, hold my beer, watch this. Exactly right. And that is required for this business, just like many other businesses. But you were saying on mailers, you do like mailers mm -hmm. because you don't have to manage callers or texters, right? You, Your ideal client is one that comes to you. Correct. And mailers does that for you. It brings them right to you. But if you're doing a mailer, you still have to find the people to mail to. So that means you have to purchase data. You still gotta get the data part. And you have to write a check to the postcard company or whatever company that provides that service. Yes. I'm assuming you use the service. I you use the service. You weren't licking and stamping nope. tens of thousands nope. of envelopes. I graduated. You graduated. I graduated from that. Yeah. <laughs> Professional stamp licker, yeah. David Buckles. There's Listen, you do what you gotta do. Yeah, but I think what we're trying to open up people to is you answered the question, getting started, leverage relationships with realtors in your community. Yep. Once you've graduated from there, then you can look at pay-per-click, right. which requires a website. And if you want a website, you can check out buying one through carrots. Mm -hmm. Carrots.com. Carrot.com. Carrot.com. Or you could purchase a bunch of data. 
Mm -hmm. You could then have the can CRM. I give, can I give everyone a hack yes. on data? Yes. So yes, you can purchase data and data is expensive. Or if you're partnered with a good title company. Ooh. If you're partnered with a good title company, title companies have access to some of the best data, some of the most accurate data. They want your business. They want the business, period. So when they're spending all this marketing money with realtors and farming neighborhoods for listings because they want the title policy. Mm -hmm. They want to get paid to do that transaction. Yep. They want the they're willing to invest with realtors in the market. They're willing to invest in their community because they're going to they're going to write the policies for these people. So I would say go to your preferred title partner if you have one, if you don't find one. Um, and then ask them for their support with certain data, with certain list requirements. That's what I've done. I love that. That is a hack. That is a tip and a trick. That was every reason you should have made it this far on this episode Yeah, was for that right there. I haven't paid for data in years. Good for you. I haven't paid for data in years. Good for you. I'm now literally going to hop on my Monday call with my real estate investment company because we have pipeline call every Monday, mm -hmm. finance call every Thursday. Great. And I'm like, hey guys, by the way, I'm so glad you dropped 30 grand purchasing all that data that's gonna feed us for the next year. Next time, mm, let's check with our title partners because yes, my advice would be you need partners. Correct. Right, not necessarily business partners, maybe that would work for you, but partners would be people in the real estate community, realtors to bird dog for you. Title companies that can A, handle your closings for you, handle your transactions, but they can also maybe supply you with the data. So then you have to find a company that would do the mailers, mm -hmm. but you like mailers, mailers worked well for you and you like them because it didn't require you to do outbound sales and solicitation, only inbound. Right. And now you're doing TV. And now we're doing TV commercials. How do you like TV so far? So Be honest. I, so I love it. Okay. I love it. Um, I can't say that I hate it. It's only been 90 days or so. Yep. The pipeline's full, deals are, are happening. What I love the most about TV is, is that I'm bigger than they think I am. Yes. Or it makes yes. me appear bigger than I actually am. Okay. And that just, there's so much competition in this market. Not necessarily this market, Orlando, but in this industry, I would mm -hmm. say. And there's a lot of mistrust in this industry. People got burned by Zillow, Open Door, OfferPad, the iBuyers during the 2020 to 2022 boom. And then they found out that all those big buyers lost their behinds and weren't running good businesses and they were just trying to chase the market. So not only were they chasing the market and overpaying, well, then they got smarter and realized how much money they were losing. Then they jacked up all their fees and were coming back with inspection requests. And so now people have been burned by OfferPad, Open Door, and Mark Spain, who they just don't like the sales process. And you just got a normal looking guy like me that comes on and says, hey, I'll buy your house. The call volume has been great. Now the call volume has been great, but there's a lot of tire kickers. Yes. Lots of people that are calling during divorce court saying, Hey, I saw your commercial. How much can you pay for my house? I said, well, what's the address? Well, look it up. Well, what's the address? I'm not talking to you. And it's these people. Some people are in nursing homes and some people are absolutely, I had a 10 second Tom yesterday, 10 second Tom talking to the person every every 30 seconds or so hey who are you why, why are you talking to me oh, again oh no way i'm david calling to buy your house oh yeah well my ha and then just and i had to politely say oh my gosh it doesn't seem like i'm a good fit for you um but that's probably the fourth or fifth one we've had in the last 90 days i love it because of the types of people that we're talking to and the types of deals we're doing yeah. but i would imagine going on the tv it's a big upfront investment Huge. where you don't, know, unless you have a massive financial backing, I don't think you wake up one day and say, I'm gonna go into real estate investing and I'm gonna go into TV. Um, I think that's something you would potentially work towards, whether it's a right. three year goal or a five year goal. Um, I love what you said for people getting started, learn how to find the deal first. Right. Because then you have to do this. How do I learn how to figure out, the term is underwrite. Underwrite. Right, how do I underwrite something meaning I'm determining what to offer. Like, are there any resources, any courses? I mean, my biggest concern if I'm getting into real estate investing is I'd make a bad buy. Mm -hmm. How would you tell someone to prevent the bad buys? So I invested a lot in coaching and mentorship. I'd never done it before. You know, I'd never, I've been on this journey for the first time in my whole life. So I'm looking to people who've done it before me, right? 
So I reached out, I hired some coaches, and now I have resources, I have flipped calculators. And there's, I mean, again, everyone's given information away for free online. Like you can find a lot of free resources and tools. YouTube University. Exactly yep. right. Again, like you said, business owners are resourceful. Get out there and get resourceful because you don't necessarily need to pay for all the information that is readily available. For someone who's charging, it you can find it for free online. Okay. So I would suggest looking at online resources, but at the same time, like, call someone like me. Like I have wholesalers or other fix and flippers who will say, Hey, I know you're working with your own crews. How much are you paying for tile and cabinets and fl and this and that? So how do you get good at, you know, scoping out a project? Call people who are doing it every day. Yeah. When you talked about partners, right? Like you need referral partners, you need vendor partners, you, you need dugout partners or dugout buddies. You need guys that you can go shoot the shit with and talk about how good and how bad things are all at the same time because they've probably gone through it or are going through it and have a solution or a, a suggestion that can help you. But even the agents in our office, or when we do trainings, the only way to understand it is to do it, which is why we host fix and flip workshops at our actual fix and flips. And we walk people around the house and we say, hey, here's our cost on this, here's our cost on this. So when you're walking through and you're trying to figure out whether it's for yourself or another investor, oh, I know that I have two bathrooms and it costs me X dollars per bathroom. I've got a kitchen and an average kitchen costs me X dollars. And you know that because you talked to a general contractor or a tradesperson or somebody who painted a 2000 square foot house inside now and it was eight grand. Okay, well I know based on this, those houses will be around this much. And it's repetition. It's just, you gotta get out there and do it. You gotta get out there and ask the questions and get your hands dirty. If you're gonna do it again, treat it like a business. We'll get in there, look at what those numbers are and make it fun because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. So me picking up what you're putting down, if I'm getting into this business and I need to learn how to become resourceful, I probably need to have a decent home inspector in my back pocket. Oh, absolutely. I need to have a decent tradesperson, whether it's a glorified high level handyman or an actual general contractor mm -hmm. and some really good realtors. Because if I don't know what I'm doing, I can lean on the realtor to help me figure out what can I sell this home for? Correct. The realtor can also tell me what are the improvements I need to make, right? What's the need to make? What's the must make? And what's the, if your budget allows it, this would be nice too. Right. Have your contractor walk the home with you and say, this is what I charge you for this. This is what I charge you for this. Have an inspector maybe before you even make an offer, mm -hmm. give you an idea of all the things that need to be done. Right, like you you don't need to necessarily exactly know what you're doing. You will learn as you grow. Correct. But this is what I would be doing, especially in a market like we're in, because look, the 2020 and 2021 markets were terrible in my opinion for someone looking to launch their real estate investing career. Mm -hmm. Now, if you already had your systems and processes and your deal flow and your lead flow, it was amazing. You literally took down a property and by the time you could close on it, maybe put some lipstick on it and get it back on the market, it went up by 20 grand. It was too like, easy. Like a bad buy would still be a good buy, mm -hmm. right? Where in a normal market, like the one that we're in, a bad buy is a bad buy. And you oh, could yeah. lose 20, 30, $40,000 because you didn't buy something at a discount enough or because you underestimated the scope of work that was required to get that home in move in, you know, sellable, ready to go condition. Yeah. But to your point, be resourceful. There are people in your community that, whether they're dugout people, dugout people to me would be like another investor, yep. right? You and I are now dugout mates, exactly. right? We're in the dugout together. Um, or lean on your partners and partners would just be the vendors. Correct. Your plumber, your electrician, your handyman, your general contractor, your landscape person, as well as you know, six or 10 or 20 real estate agents that you network with that they're out there bird dogging or or sourcing leads for you yeah yep um here's something else i once had this guest on a few months back his name is john o'leary he's a local guy okay um if you don't know john you should connect with john um and john's been in, he's about my age a little bit older than you uh but he's been in the market forever 20 years but he's a hard money lender okay and he and his partner own their own hard money uh company right okay but what he does really well is because he wants your hard money loan, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're an investor and you don't have funds, whether they're private funds, which you do really good, mm -hmm. or whether they're um, your own funds, which isn't really scalable when you start using your own money, unless you're like a multi, 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 multi-millionaire. Right. But John provides capital or finds capital 
for investors looking to buy investment properties to fix and flip or even to fix and buy and hold or burr or all those strategies. All those. Okay. But what he does, he'll coach you. He benefits from you getting good. He benefits from you knowing what you're doing. So John, with his 20 years experience, he makes his money as a lender. Wow. But as your lender, he'll also offer you resources so that you don't make a mistake, so that you do make money. Because if you make money, you're going to want to go you're do gonna, it again. You're going to come back. And you're going to come back and you're going to come right. back. Yeah. So John O'Leary has been a great source of information for our, 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 our listeners and our, and our viewers as well as the local real estate investors. He works a lot with Alex Q in our market. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he and Alex Q are pretty tight. Cool. Alex Q, for anyone not in Orlando, he is, to me, the who's who of what you want to build. Mm -hmm. But he started as a wholesaler, yep. then a fix and flipper. Now, I don't think he even touches residential real estate. I think this dude's all into, like, massive storage units. It's all the above. That's, yes. That's the beautiful part of it. So his brother runs their wholesale operation. Okay. I got a text from their wholesale team when I walked in here today about a new deal that they're pushing out. So his brother runs the wholesale team. They do new construction. They're building several houses. Okay. And, and I and I do believe you're right. He's All Steel Storage is his new storage venture. And they're 100% all things self-storage, like trying to amass that. It's the cash flow. It's in a recessive market storage facilities are proven to do very, very well. And the best part is he's doing it all with creative financing. So he's getting sellers to do carrybacks anywhere between 20 and 50%. Wow. So now you're geeking out. This is a how to, yeah. this is a how to, sorry, but no, 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 it's yeah. good because he, here's what's cool. You're five years into this. I'm three years into this. Someone like Alex Q, I think is 10 or 15 years mm -hmm. into this. Everything that you read about and dream about is achievable. If you're willing to get started, learn as you grow, get 1% better per day. I know that's cliche to say, but this is how business works. Right. And not give up. Not give up and never slack. Right. You will get there, but please don't come into it just thinking all of a sudden you're going to have it mastered. No. You may literally start by door knocking, by putting out ugly yard signs, mm -hmm. or by networking with realtors where all you're able to do is put something under co contract for cheap, assign it to another investor so that you can raise capital so you can learn and get better to where maybe your six or nine month goal is I'm finally going to take down my first property. Right. I'm finally right. going to take down this home that needs $60,000 of repair. But if I take it down for 200 and put 60 grand into it, I'm going to resell it for 400. Sure. Right. And then yeah. through that, you will make mistakes. Things won't go the way that you anticipate them. You may sell it for 20 grand less. It may cost you 10 grand more. That's I, okay. I always say everything takes longer and costs more money. I don't care who you are, how much experience you have. You're going to rip down a wall and something's going to pop up. You're going to have an extra dumpster charge. Like it's it's going to take longer and it's going to cost more money. Yeah. What's the most money you've ever lost on a transaction? Um, so funny you ask that. So last year we got smacked and so we bought a property and two properties in downtown Winter Garden. So for everyone who doesn't know downtown Winter Garden, it's like one of the best. Q, Q old Florida is how I would describe to somebody. Right. So one of those markets, it's Mayberry. You yes. can't lose golf cart, you know, all of the above. I almost said Mayberry. Literally. It's yeah. like Mayberry on steroids. Exactly. Yep. So here we are. I get two houses in the golf cart district of downtown Winter Garden, April of 2022. I never pulled a hard money a day in my, a hard money loan a day in my life because we used private money, and my private money was used up. We had five flips going at the time. By private money, just for those again, how to? Yes. These are private individuals. Think your dentist. Right. Think your CPA. Think, think your, your best aunt. friends. Yeah, your, right. your your best friend's father or your your aunt. Right. Right. You're going to these people who want in on real estate they want some passive income but they don't have the time the resources right. to go out in bird dog deals and then to connect with the contractors and to walk the properties right right so you're going to them and you're saying hey look i'll find the properties you finance it and i'll cut you in whether it's paying you two points plus ten percent mm -hmm. or whether it's i'm going to give you twenty percent of profits there's multiple ways to skin that cat. skin that cat and that's right. a whole nother episode right literally mm -hmm. we can do an episode and we should we should raising private money for real estate investors so that could be an entire only episode. way i've done every deal except these two okay we're talking about the biggest yep. losses yep the biggest losses i lost fifty thousand dollars on each of these houses 100 grand total 100 grand total 
So it was carrying costs for 11 months on each of those houses, price reductions for a year is what led us to about $50,000 in losses on each. Well, so I'll say congratulations. Oh, I got my stripes, man. I well, always I mean, wondered when I was going to get that story. Yeah. And now I can say that I've lost more money than people make in a year. Yeah. Congratulations, you know? because you learned something. And by the way, that $100,000, that may have been your MBA, that right? Some 100%. people drop a hundred grand on some kind of a secondary, you know, postgraduate education. You did. Mm -hmm. Ours, knock on wood, 35 grand. 35 grand is funny. We took the property down about the same time, April yep. of 22. And then the, the rates and, and that whole thing. Just every, just that was the, 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 the peak of the market, so to speak. Right. So we bought too high mm -hmm. and then we couldn't get it sold. And same thing. And what's crazy for us, it was our first dabble into private money. So I got hard money for the acquisition. Okay. Right. So this home was a $200,000 purchase. I found a hard money lender who was willing to, to give us 180 of the 200. Cool. And then I went to a friend is actually a childhood friend of our acquisition specialist. Cool. And this is a guy, he's a lineman, he's single. He's a lineman. He makes about a buck 40 a year, had a bunch of money sitting in cash. We're like, Hey man, give us that 25 grand. We'll, we'll promise you 10%. And we're like, look, it's going to be a six month note, but we'll have, you'll have you paid back in like 90 days. Right or nine months <laughs> or yeah. nine months and, um, learned a very valuable lesson. Um, but you, you know, and I share that because it's not always going to be like, Oh my God, these big wins. No, I, we sold properties for three grand mm -hmm. profit. I thought it was going to be 25 grand. Right. It was three sold some for 10 grand. And that's what we wanted. Right? right. Cause we were just trying to get started. Right. So we share these stories, not to scare you, but to properly inform you, but also let you know it's okay. Right, it's okay. How about this? I know we're running a little bit long. What are some things that we didn't cover? Again, how to getting started. Mm -hmm. What are some tips, tricks, advice that you would give to someone that we haven't already covered? Okay. Um, even if it's just pointing them in the right direction. So yeah, that's great. I think a couple of tips or tricks would be own the identity. If you're gonna get started in real estate, like tell everyone, hey, I'm getting started in real estate. Don't pretend to know everything in real estate. Tell everyone you're getting started. Everyone's journey starts somewhere. Tell everyone you're starting. You'll find out who supports you and who doesn't very quickly. And just work with the people who support you. I It sounds elementary and it sounds simple, but like if someone were to tell me this today, I'd be like, okay, cool. Anyone who doesn't give me the time of day, I'm not going to waste my time. Um, so there's that uh, tip and trick. Oh, gosh, I mean, I, I feel like it's so simple because there's so many resources readily available to everyone. But I just start. Pick, a, pick an avenue. Find your real estate agent. Find that identity and then own it. And just like you said, 1% better every day. If you can consistently show up, whether that's an hour a day or 10 hours a day, own the identity and just show up. Yeah. Uh, mine would be, let it be all consuming, yes. right? Meaning where are you getting your information and your content, mm -hmm. right? You started with this podcast episode. Cool. These podcasts that we do on this show, literally our theme is shit. They don't teach you in school. Right. right. It's we are your financial friends with benefits, That's but great. we are not a podcast specifically geared towards real estate investors. Mm -hmm. We talk about real estate investing because it's something I'm passionate about. I am a owner of a real estate investment company, but there are other resources, right? Whether totally. it's uh, Ryan, what's Ryan's last name out? Uh, Ryan Pineda. Yeah, Ryan Pineda. Or Pace Morby. Pace Morby. So I've been carrots, in Carrots, Bigger Pockets. Yeah. yeah, there's all kind of stuff. And I've paid a lot. I've paid Grant Cardone. I've paid Pace Morby. I've paid Carlos Reyes. I've paid, I've paid a lot of people along this journey. And even if it's to get that one little, there's this guy named Chris Prefontaine. Nobody knows this guy's name, but he wrote a book on like basically creative financing. And there's a couple out there, but... There's a lot of people out there that have one little nugget that can change your business. Just like with the MLS strategy that you tell me you guys use, like we use all those strategies, but we have to pay to play in those avenues. And now I'm a well-rounded real estate agent because I've paid all of those fix and flippers and wholesalers. And like, I've paid all of those people pace with creative and raising private money. Like there's so many resources out there and pace has got a free YouTube channel. Yeah. Like you've got a free podcast. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much information here. So I agree with you. Just, just get all in. Yeah. What, um, I, I wanted to ask you this earlier. Do you buy from wholesalers? 
I have. You have. So that, like, that's something we didn't cover. Right. If you're getting started and you're having a hard time finding the deals, there are people who it's that's the all they specialize model. in. Right. They go out and find it and they take it down for a certain price and they're willing to resell it to you for a slightly higher or small markup. But if done properly, they leave enough meat on the bone where you could still be successful right. with taking that home down. Right. Right. With taking it down, fixing it up, reselling it, or mm -hmm. taking it down, fixing it up, and renting it. Right. Right. Because those are different strategies. Correct. You may be a fix and flipper. You may be a fix and hold. At which point, if you fix and hold, look up Burr. Right. Right. Look up what Burr stands for. I will tell you, but look up how you do it. Right. And Burr stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. Yeah. So you're going to buy the home, then you're going to rehab it, mm -hmm. then you're going to rent it out. Then you're going to refinance it. When you refinance it, you're getting a different loan at a higher loan amount so that not only are you paying off the first loan you took to acquire the property, you're also getting back all the money that you put into it. Right. And if you're lucky, you, you can get, get all the money that. that you put in plus maybe five or 15 grand more, right? That five or 15 grand more you can now use as income. Right. And or it's tax free. Yep. And you can roll it into the next investment. Yes. Yes. So Burr is something that any entry level, first time starting my company, a real estate investor should understand what Burr is. Again, that would be a training video that we could put mm -hmm. together. We could host it on the website. That could be a whole different podcast episode when we talk about raising money. Right. Or maybe we do a whole entire episode called uh, exit strategies, right? We have so many places that we can go. Yeah. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to introduce people to David Buckles because we appreciate that. You, you are, well, you're too good of a resource in my backyard for us not to do episodes like this consistently. Like I would like to have you on more often. I've had Cameron Moore on. Okay. I want to have Cameron on more often. I've had John O'Leary on. I want to have John on more often. I, I would love to meet Alex Q bring Alex on. Like we have a lot of talent yes. in our backyard that we can start bringing value to these people. Like you mentioned something, David, that I'm like, Oh my God, mind blown. This is more for like level three of owning your own real estate investment company. You are hosting events at these homes that you're buying mm -hmm. where not only are you teaching other real estate investors, what you're doing and how to do it. But on the flip side, they now are connected to you. These are people who can bring you deals. Correct. These are people that maybe they can't bring you deals, but they have money sitting on the sidelines and Correct. they want to. So although you're giving immense value for free and you're educating people, which I think is amazing, it benefits you too. Absolutely. Like, like it benefits you that you're just letting people know, hey, this is what I do for a living. If you want to be a part of it, if you want to support it, then I would like to include you in my group. If not, hey, no worries. I say that there's two people that I work with. There's the people who want to do real estate and make money, and then there's people who want to have real estate and make money from it. So it's like, or have access to real estate and make money from it. And that's what we do. We provide opportunities. We provide opportunities for you to be an investor, and we can walk you through, and here's a house, or show you how to do it. Or we can give you the opportunity to put your money to work and make money. And so you're either going to do real estate and make money, or you're going to make money from it. And that's like, again, who, who can, what can they do? They can decide those two things. What type of investor are you? What type of investor do you want to be? I love it. How do people get a hold of you? On uh, Instagram. On Instagram. You can okay. Give me Instagram, David Buckles. It's pretty simple. Just first name, last name. First name, last name. B-U-C-K-L-E-S. That's it. First name, David. Yep. Only and, one way to spell David, by the way. And if you find an older white guy, bald, um, with a white beard, that's my father. Oh, okay. Yep. So He's on IG too? He is, believe it or not. Nice. Yep. So that's not, that's not me. I hope they can see that by now. Yeah. But um, yeah, on Instagram, you know, David, David Buckles, they can hit me up uh, David at Reliant Home Offer if they want to email me. Yeah, David at ReliantHomeOffer.com. Yep. Okay. And on Facebook, David Buckles, the traditional socials. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. David, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the Loan Officer Podcast. We look forward to having you on more often. Thank you. Unfortunately, we're out of time. So that is all the time we have for you today, but we do look forward to catching all of you on our next episode. Peace.